Good morning. I'm William Christie, Provost of Wingate University, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this morning's lecture inaugurating the university's centennial year. There are two brief announcements I would like to make. First, although photography is permitted in the auditorium, we ask that members of the audience not leave their seats at any time during the program to take pictures or for other reasons. Second, we ask at the conclusion of this morning's program that the members of the audience remain in their places until the platform party has had an opportunity to leave the auditorium. We thank you for your attention to these two requests. It is now my pleasure to present the President of the International Campaign for Tibet, Mr. Lodi Gary. <laughs> President Megan, Chairman Adams, Dr. Christie, <clears throat> it is my great honor to be able to facilitate the visit of His Holiness to this university. Several year, <clears throat> months back, when His Holiness was kind enough to agree to make a visit at our invitation, one of the few people that His Holiness wrote was to Chairman Helms. I had also the honor to bring that letter to the Chairman, and immediately the Chairman said that I would like my friend to visit my university. This was one decision that I was able to take boldly without seeking His Holiness permission because I knew that His Holiness would be delighted to visit the university that his friend wanted him to visit. <clears throat> Those of us in Washington, D.C. trying to help the cause of Tibet have a great friend and Chairman Helms. If I can say so without being a, a if I can be very frank, I think Senator is one of the rare species among public servants who has the courage to stand for principles. Unfortunately, we need, you know, there, there are, I say rare spe species because throughout the world, there are less and less political leaders like Senator Helms. It has always been great honor to me to be working with him. And I know that for the people of Tibet, for His Holiness, at the hour of our need, we have a powerful friend to whom I can go to seek help. So with that, once again, on my personal behalf, and on behalf of the International Campaign for Tibet, and for, I can say, thousands of friends of Tibet and the United States, it really gives me great honor to be able to facilitate the visit of His Holiness here <clears throat> to the college, to the university that his friend wanted him to visit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the university, Dr. Jerry E. McGee. Many of you gathered here today, our own first year students, our guests from area schools, and some of our guests from distant points may not be familiar with our friend and alumnus, Senator Jesse Helms, even though you certainly know who he is. It's my pleasure to introduce you today to the real Jesse Helms. Unless you are a student of the Senate and have seen his speeches from the Senate floor in their entirety, or have seen Senator Helms interviewed live on a program like Evans and Novak, or read some of his own writing, or have had the privilege of speaking with him personally, you may not have an, uh, excuse me, an accurate view of Monroe's best known native son. You may not know that Senator Helms is a warm and gracious man who loves this state and all of its residents. You may not know that Senator Helms is a champion of American freedom and committed to seeing that the freedom which we enjoy is both protected here and promoted in other countries. You may not know that Senator Helms is respected around the world because he can be counted on to befriend those who have had their freedoms abridged by governments they did not choose. This explains the great affection with which he is received by the Cuban exile community in Florida, and the reason that the people of Tibet can rely on him to be their advocate within our own government. You may not know that Senator Helms is among the most respected members of the United States Senate because of the very strengths which are sometimes caricatured. 
his devotion to traditional values, his refusal to compromise on bedrock issues, his hard work on behalf of his constituents, his absolute honesty in all of his dealings. These are the very things which make him a trusted leader and treasured friend. Wingate University is honored to be counted among Jesse Helms' friends, and we're proud to count him among ours. I'm pleased to welcome him once again today to his alma mater, Senator Jesse Helms. Thank you so much. Dr. McGee, uh, I thank you so much for those kind and generous words. I wrote a little piece last night to introduce the Dalai Lama, His Holiness, my friend, your friend. And then I read uh, all of the uh, stories and articles in the Charlotte Observer and other publications, and they told all about his holiness. So I'm going to abide by a principle that I learned when I first got to the Senate, that it's dangerous to give a podium to a United States senator, because he'll never use a thousand words if 10,000 will do as well. So I'm going to be brief and say to you a few things from my heart about our distinguished and beloved visitor this morning, His Holiness, the Dalai Lama of Tibet. I met him not too long after I had arrived in Washington, and I was captivated by his warm and generous smile. And when I had visited with him, at various official meetings at which he was welcomed by committees of the United States Senate, I realized that this is a unique and wonderful man. You already know that. And it's typical of him when I said, would you enjoy going down and greeting some of the people? He jumped up and said, yes, I would. I'd like to go. And so you saw the man in action. You have read about the his Holiness, the Dalai Lama of Tibet. But let me say to you and to him that as long as there is breath in me, and certainly as long as I am a member of the United States Senate, I am going to defend the principles of this fine and wonderful man and the future of his country. So it's my honor to present to you my friend, and I'm going to say your friend, because intuitively and instinctively, he loves you too. Your Holiness, you are welcomed by all of these people and many hundreds more who would be here if there had been room for them. I present you to them, and I present them to you. His Holiness, the Dalai Lama of Tibet. Not only a friend of few of us here, 
but a friend of all Tibetans, uh, Senator Jesse Helms, and then others here at the Wingate uh, University, and friends. I'm extremely happy to be here today with you. <coughs> First of all, I would like to express my deep sense of gratitude to uh, many of our American friends in Washington, many of the senators and congressmen, and especially to Senator Jesse Helms, who has been a staunch supporter of the Tibetan issue. Uh, the Tibetan issue, which although has truth on its side, has been passing through an extremely difficult period. <coughs> In other day, Konganda, uh, and I'm deeply touched by Senator Helms promise to continue to give this support in the future. <coughs> Now I, uh, I, I will try to speak through my own broken English, but occasionally so I, uh, I, will, I have to rely on my translator. Do you understand? Mm. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> As a human being, I always consider the human warmth is something really precious thing. And I feel there's a many problem on global level or community level or family level or even one single person's level. There's a certain there's a day, uh, problem, frustrations, fear, doubt, is it depression? Is it these? I think many things, many negative things, many, many how say, unpleasant experiences. Uh, essentially, I think is a uh, man-made, our own creation. These, because lack of uh, human warmth or human how say, compassion. Uh, so therefore, the I always practice uh, human compassion or human affection as much as I can. Because as I, I feel it is something uh, as I, the root of all our good qualities and all our uh, success, very much uh, related with that, with that condition, with that you see, uh, human quality. And here, I notice the people here, uh, you really, uh, as I say, on your face, it's a genuine big smile, or some kind of, I think, the affections uh, I, uh, I really, you see, uh, can read, you see, your deep feeling through that way. So, I'm very, very happy to be with you, be, be with amongst same human being, you see, uh, and uh, and you see, some, uh, the same kind of as a day, inner inner as a day, friendship feeling, or warm feeling. I really appreciate. And also, you see, uh, me as a Tibetan and as a Dalai Lama, you see, they, under present circumstances. It's a very, very heavy sort of responsibility. And sometimes I, I feel that the responsibility is so big 
and so difficult. Uh, although I have some kind of firm belief, ultimately, you see, just for truth, the will must prevail. Uh, but then, you see, anyway, in our case, time is running out. Uh, so under such circumstances, I really appreciate see, the other human brothers, sisters, you see, deep feeling and sense of uh, solidarity and, you see, trying to help as much as, much as can. That, uh, you see, to me, a source of great inspiration. <clears throat> then, uh, uh, I want to, to say a few, few, few things. First, see, one of my basic uh, belief or fundamental as a belief uh, is that basic human nature is gentleness, more compassionate. And therefore, you see, the, uh, every human being has the seed of good quality or have potential. Is it to create happy life, meaningful life, or happy human community? I think you see, it is absolutely wrong you see, to believe our nature is something negative, and uh, there is not much hope for future. You see, that kind of attitude, I think, you see, wrong. Uh, so be uh, so optimistic. That, I feel, is very, very important. You see, the success or happier future much depend on our will, our effort, with self-confidence, so without shaking or without losing hope and determination. See, there is always possible to overcome problem or suffering. Right from the beginning, if we remain, uh, if we remain, oh, this problem is so big, uh, we can't do anything. Is it that kind of pessimistic attitude, I believe, is the real source of failure. So be proud. And especially America. I think compared with Tibetan, Tibetan nation, America, anyway, young nation. <laughs> but uh, you say you have. I think it's a great potential. And also, you see, your traditional, your value, liberty, freedom, uh, you see, uh, these are, I think, the, uh, I think, fundamental human values. I mean, these are based on fundamental human values. So, so you see, while it's a time changing, of course, it's a way of life, you see, the, uh, I see the certain, certain pattern of our life, or including dress or hair, yes, style. Uh, hair style. Uh, hair style, and also the different colors here and there. <laughs> and this is a time change. Uh, time goes, these new fashions, new things, uh, you see, goes and, 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 and come. That's okay, doesn't matter. But I think the basic uh, principle, is, principle matter is concerned, I think it's so long we are human beings. Uh, I think see, these basic values they should not I say, they neglect. And for example, you see, family, uh, the family life, right? Family, family value. value. And also the different kind of spiritual value. You see, these are, I think, and the American, you see, the, I say, the traditional, the value of you see, freedom, liberty, democracy, these, you see, they, uh, no point to neglect. And, and freedom, with sense of responsibility. Uh, freedom does not mean, you see, uh, no self-discipline. No. Freedom with sense of responsibility, sense of commitment, sense of concern. And with that, some kind of, you see, uh, uh, self-discipline. I think, you see, these are, uh, I think, the uh, real, I say, the, uh, I say, the important matter for human community or human being. 
Then another thing, uh, while what is it, a uh, material uh, development on the, uh, with the help of science and technology, which is very good, very useful. Uh, but, uh, but meantime, it is wrong to believe or to expect uh, every human problem can solve with help of technology. Right. I think that's wrong. Quite logic, it's a quite simple logic. We human beings, not produced by machine alone. By machine. Not, not by machine. You see, we, although it's a machine, you see, help sometimes now, you see, they, uh, <laughs> you see, they, uh, to, uh, to begin human life, to start human life. But I basically, you see, we are not as a part of mission. So therefore, our requirement uh, cannot provide fully by mission. So therefore, you see, uh, it is wrong to expect if you have money, you see, everything can solve. That kind of attitude, I think, wrong. Uh, not realistic. Uh, so therefore, while we uh, have, I say, uh, the material development, there is no point to neglect about our inner spiritual value. Uh, now, when I say it's a spirituality, there are two kinds of spirituality. One is a spir uh, spiritual uh, with faith, such as you see, uh, as a Christianity, or Muslim, or Judaism, and Buddhism, and Hinduism, and so on. Uh, and another uh, spiritual spirituality is without particular religious faith, just to simply, you see, retain or preserve or, I'd say, increase these uh, basic human uh, good quality, such as human compassion, uh, the spirit of forgiveness, or spirit of harmony. These are, uh, I believe, the basic human good qualities. From birth, you see, this seed of these good qualities always there. In fact, I think uh, entire our life begin within the, or say, the hum, human uh, affection. Without human affection, we can't survive. So that's fact. So the, um, and then also, you see, the, uh, um, you see according to the modern you see, medical science, you see, peace of mind is very, very much you see, related with uh, health also. So these now, you see, become clear. So therefore, they, in order to develop calm mind, peace of mind, these basic human good qualities are very influential factor. So therefore, you see, even one individual may not have much interest towards religion, okay, remain as a non-believer, but at the same time, uh, should be a good human being, warm-hearted person. That is very important. Uh, this is, is not a question of something, how should they, uh, morale or something, you see, the ethics. But, but essentially, it's our own interest. Look, uh, uh, our mind remain calm. Uh, then, 24 hours, you see, you get some real benefit. Right from the, begin, right from the early morning, your mind, calm, peace. Have your breakfast, very tasteful. And lunch, and work. Oh yes, lunch, and uh, during night you sleep. All goes very well. Digestion goes good. Sleep without any pill. You, see, you can sleep very well. And then you see your daily work. Our brain remain calm. Uh, no hazardy, kaza nervousness, right? Nervousness, agitation. Uh, agitation. Ah, you can handle 
all your professional works very properly. So uh, usually you see uh, here you see people used to consider these things. I mean, look at things objectively uh, and carry work with ob objectively. Right? Then you see our mind when really you see calm there, and then you see we can we can really you see carry that kind of say way. If our mind say too much agitation, uh, how how can how can you see how can see things objectively right? so there therefore the every human activities then can be constructive if our basic mind if basic mental state not that kind of calm then there is possibility every human action including religious uh, uh, sorry, including how say, religious teaching can be negative, can be how say, uh, destructive. So I often, you see, uh, making example, right? Example. Example. You see, one hand is five fingers. All these fingers, so long related with the palm. Then every finger you see, can be very useful and can carry its own responsibility effectively. These fingers, if uh, alienated, separated, separated from the basic the hand or palm, then no use. So you see similarly, the prime mover of our life, of our activities is motivation. So, so long motivation is sincere, and inner world calm, then every action be a positive. So therefore, the, uh, while the material develop, development is taking place, uh, we must pay kind of, attention. We, we must pay kind of, enough, right? We must sufficient attention. Uh, sufficient you see, pay, uh, attention to look about our inner quality or spiritual values. If someone you see, who feel, you see, who believe, or who, uh, who, can, or who can accept you see, religious belief, then of course, you see, follow different religious tradition. Then usually, you see, uh, I advise or I suggest uh, to, the, to people that it is, generally speaking, it is better you see, to follow one's own traditional religion religious faith. Sometimes I noticed you see, some people without much uh, proper you see, the, thought. Uh, thought or investigation hurriedly you see, change, hurriedly change religion. Then later you see, find some difficulties. So therefore, you see, better to follow one's own religious tradition. Then of course, in case some individual who really feel the different you see, kind of religious tradition is more effective more suitable according to one's own mental disposition, then it is individual right is it, to, to follow is it, the, new, new, uh, the new teaching. Uh, but then, you see, it is uh, here, you see, I, I found, you see, uh, in America, you see, there are uh, you see, some Buddhists who really, uh, how to say, uh, uh, how to say, get this experience. The Buddhist way of approach is more effective on their life, it's okay. But then, you see, I, uh, I want you see, to tell you uh, that there are, you see, I mean, human nature, there are some kind of the tendency that in order to justify one's own, you see, uh, uh, change the religion, change religion. Uh, you see, a little bit critical view towards your previous uh, religious tradition, then this, you see, we should, we should avoid. Because, you see, this moment, now, firstly, you see, the various different religious traditions, in spite of different how say, uh, philosophy or views, uh, all have great potential, I think same potential, you see, to help humanity. Uh, so, in order, uh, so, you see, uh, uh, the respect towards all world major religion is, uh, how say, reasonable and very important. 
Then secondly, uh, you see the, today, world becomes smaller. Therefore, communication or contact between different traditions, always there. So, uh, and, and sometimes, you see, it, it causing uh, trouble among humanity, among community. Look at Bosnia. Same town, even same family, sometimes, you see, uh, some, you see, the, uh, uh, difficult things, you see, happen because of the different religion, because of the name of different religion. So that's really unfortunate. So therefore, the, the, I think many parts of the world, you see, there are some kind of movement, you see, to, uh, to increase the understanding, mutual understanding between different religious traditions. Uh, I also you see, participate in, in that, in that house movement or that house of work. Uh, so I do feel, you see, there is common ground. We can work together. Uh, we can develop genuine mutual respect. And through that way, you see, even you see mutual learning from within this different religious tradition. I personally, you see, learned many good things from other religious traditions. So therefore, you see, uh, the, you see the, it is very, very important uh, to, to promote genuine harmony among the different religious traditions. So under such circumstances, you see, the uh, critics to, uh, to other religious traditions is not, not, not good. Uh, so then, uh, since, you see, uh, for humanity, family level or individual level or national level or global level, uh, it, is, uh, it has become very, very crucial about the deeper value of human being or deeper uh, some kind of the spirituality. So therefore, the uh, various I said, different the, I said, the academic institutions, such as you see, this university, I feel you, see, you have a great responsibility you see, to build healthier human society. Uh, so, uh, the, I get the impression that traditionally, in, in many years, in, uh, a few hundred years ago, I feel, you see, the, uh, when, when the, I'll say the separate uh, education institution started, right? at that time, uh, I feel, you see, the, for I'll say the, uh, deeper human values, the moral ethics, these uh, taken care by the religious institution. Mm -hmm. The knowledge, the, the brain side is it taken care by the, is it the educational institutions. I think that's the, the way of the beginning. Uh, then eventually, in the society, the religious interest, uh, degenerate or declining. Decline. Uh, uh, so, uh, as a result, eventually, nobody take care about, I mean, yes, about you see, the deeper human value. And that, I think, affects family life and community life. I think uh, sometimes I feel, you see, the certain how say, the unhealthy things uh, in, in, in different parts of the world. Uh, but, uh, I, I mean, I mean you see, those how say, the, uh, materially, highly say, developed society, there are all sorts of you see, diff un unhealthy things, you see, uh, killing or how say, the abuse, right? abuse or sexual abuse, you see, these things. Yeah, some, sometimes you see the story, you see the young, ch young children, you see, killing one another. Such things, I think, very, very, you see, they, uh, very sad. And also, you see, parent, you see, abuse one's own as children. These are, I think, something unthinkable. So these, uh, these, some kind of moral crisis, you see, now happening. I think this is, I feel, you see, symptom, right? Symptom, you see, because there are something lacking. Uh, 
not necessarily as individual or people, something you see they, I mean, bad, no. I think right from the beginning, we are, I think you see, a bit neglected, it's a certain uh, values. So therefore, the, uh, I hope and, uh, and I believe, you see the uh, various, you see the, uh, the education institution, right? Uh, right from the beginning, I think you see, should pay more attention about deeper human value. This is not necessarily, you see, uh, teach you see, religion, but simply, you see, make clear the deeper human good qualities or deeper human values, such as you see, affection to one another uh, and sense of responsibility and individual interest very much depend on others' interest. If community happy, then single person, which part of the community naturally uh, get is a benefit. If whole community, is the atmosphere of the whole community you see, no, not healthy, then how can individual family or individual person can be a you see, happy person or happy family? So these are, you see, they very clear. You see, we can, I mean, so, so these, I think, they uh, explain to the, to, to the student right from the beginning. I think it's very, very important. Then, you see, in order to, uh, to teach the value of I mean, deeper human value, or the value of good human, uh, sorry, uh, value of uh, good quality of human being. These not sufficient, just explained by word. We must demonstrate through our action in the eyes of children. So in the family, uh, parent or friends must you see, take care of uh, child everywhere, you see, to, to show them how effective, how, 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 sorry, how useful, how, how is good the human affection. And then, you see, classroom, the teacher, not only, you see, teach the lesson or give the information, but also, you see, must, you see, show uh, the teachers, you see, the, the genuine sort of the sense of concern about the students' long future. So, is it through practice or through action? You see, we can, uh, we can, we can, how should they introduce the real value of human compassion, human affection, or sense of community. So, we may call these things as a, how should they, secular ethics. Uh, so that's, I think, I think you see, sometimes uh, I feel, you see, a bit, bit neglect. right? Neglected. So, ah. Neglected. Oh. So, you see, the, uh, in order to, uh, to have, you see, healthier society, you see, the education system, I feel, key factor. You see, this brain site increase bigger and bigger, but the warmth here becomes smaller and smaller. Then I think more trouble will, will, will come. Sometimes I do feel, you see, if we, if we look, thousands of different mammals. These mammals, even if it's very, very, how to say, very, very, very wrathful, kind of like tiger or these, you see, lions or these things, their uh, uh, destruction is very limited. But then look to human being. We are, Looks very gentle. Uh, there's no, no, that is long teeth. Well, <laughs> not like tiger. No, because I claws away. Claws. Oh, very, looks very gentle. But then, uh, in 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 in, say, in in real action, we are more destructive than these uh, other mammals. So this, not not because this this body, but because of this brain. So you see, if we too much rely only intelligence, neglect about good heart, I think you see, we will face more problems. On top of that, more instrument to utilize, to manipulate. Oh, I think you see more danger. The external force, external police force, 
no matter how efficient, with their computer and their dogs, these things, uh, they cannot cope that problem, right? Cope with that ah. very. Mm. So the inner discipline, with sense of responsibility, uh, without that, very difficult. Society will be, I think, uh, society will face more and more problems. So while we are, we are trying to, I say, trying to have remedy so for this uh, unhealthy thing in the society, uh, I think we must pay more about the basic human development through education. So this is my, uh, say, one, one, one of say, my observation or my say, uh, idea. No oh, idea. Hmm. Oh, then, then uh, uh, I also is the one to, to say something about the Tibet situation. Uh, first of all, I wanted to make clear, is it Tibet, uh, a small country, and far away from the United States, and no oil money for the time being. Uh, so is it oh neglect? Oh, there's nothing. Uh, not, sorry, uh, nothing important to us. I think that kind of attitude, I think, wrong. Uh, you see, firstly, morally speaking, the weaker, weaker one who's, who's suffering, you pay, sorry, you, you, pay, you should pay more attention. That's a human value. Animals, like dogs, seems to see those bigger dogs, the smaller dogs, much relying on, on those you see, physically more so well-built right? okay. dogs. Stronger that is the animal, animal way. We are human beings. You see, uh, we consider just justice, right? justice. justice truth, uh, uh, you see, compassion, non-violence. These are you see, something very important for humanity. So we must, you see, uh, as I say, uh, yes, we must respect these deeper value. So, so therefore, you see, that's, you see, firstly, you see, a Tibetan case, a Tibetan issue, as I mentioned before, you see, just, just cause. And whole our the freedom movement carried according the, the sorry, principle of nonviolence. And also, you see, the, our I say, the attitude towards Chinese brothers and sisters, you see, uh, within the compassionate sort of attitude, compassionate atmosphere. Uh, and, and therefore, you see, morally speaking, you see, the, uh, it is, I think, worthwhile you see, to take, uh, to look or to take care. And then secondly, Tibet, geographically, uh, uh, I feel, you see, the, uh, uh, I, I mean, because of the geographical situation, uh, I feel you see, Tibet in future, if Tibet be, become a, a genuine zone of peace, uh, irrespective of what political status, then you see, Tibet can be a very important role uh, for peace on that part of the world. Because India, one side, China, other side, most two populated nations, Genuine friendship, genuine peace between these two nations are, I think, very crucial factor for peace uh, of, of that part of the world. And since, you see, the huge as a population there, so therefore, the, even as a world peace also, you see, the, for, for world peace also, you see, that's very important. So therefore, you see, Tibet can be Geographically, you see, because of the geographical situation, Tibet can be important role in, in that in that field. Then Tibetan culture, Buddhist, usually I call Buddhist culture. This Buddhist culture, culture which based on nonviolence, based on compassion, and based on theory of interdependent. I think that culture. I'm not not talking Buddhism, but it's a Buddhist culture. I make this distinction because I noticed some Tibetan Muslim, their individual religion, their individual faith, Muslim, not Buddhism. 
but because you see they live uh, in in Buddhist community, many generations, so they are you see way of thinking, way of conduct, of behaving, you see very much within the Buddhist culture. So therefore, you see the, that you see Buddhist culture, I feel have you see great potential, you see to create happier society. So traditionally, you see. Buddhist culture, Tibetan Buddhist culture, reach uh, beyond the Tibetan border, you see, up to Mongol area, different part of the uh, now Russian Federation now, you see, and you see, Mong independent Mongolia and Inner Mongolia. These, you see, they, I mean, same culture. Now to the Chinese. First of all, Buddhism is not alien to the minds of Chinese. Uh, even today. Under difficult circumstances, you see, including some university professors in the China, uh, in China proper, you see, showing uh, widely, you see, interest towards Buddhism or any religion, and particularly Buddhism, and you see, Tibetan, uh, Tibetan Buddhism also. Therefore, you see, I feel if Tibetan Buddhist culture survive, which at, at the moment real threat, the threat of extinction is really very, very reality. Because of the many factors, especially including, especially due to Chinese population transfer. So therefore, you see, at the moment, you see, there is real danger. Uh, if you see, this danger is overcome and the Tibetan Buddhist culture survive, I feel you see, Tibetan Buddhist culture can help millions of young Chinese and the whole northern India. So the idea of the zone of peace goes very well with Tibetan Buddhist culture. So therefore, you see, uh, it is, I think, worthwhile uh, to look at the Tibetan issue, to, to take care, to help Tibetan, uh, sorry, uh, Tibetan issue. Tibetan issue, not, not like any other nationalistic movement. This is something, if you study very carefully, there are some sorry, uh, distinctive, you see, the uh, nature or feature there. So now, at the, now you see, the, uh, my you see, request or my appeal to you is this problem, the Tibetan issue, Tibetan problem, neither benefit for Tibet nor to China. Privately, some individual is Chinese is leaders privately admit they, say they want to solve this problem and problem through negotiation. Some say, people, some Chinese you see, indicated that. But still, you see, the official attitude very much, you say, I saw that aggressive or repressive uh, attitude. So, so in any way, you see, as I mentioned earlier, you see the uh, Tibetan issue can solve through negotiation uh, and uh, through negotiation mutu oh, sorry, mutually uh, acceptable or agreeable solution definitely will find. So you see my last more than 16 years, you see my stand, my method is uh, trying to reach some kind of agreement. So this I usually call middle wave approach. I'm not talking about the independence. I just is uh, trying to find a mutually agreeable solution. Uh, so now, uh, up to now, the uh, negotiation never take place although my side is ready to negotiate anywhere, anytime, without any precondition. But the other side, up to now, no concrete response has happened. So therefore, you see, please bring, please help in order to start meaningful negotiation uh, with, with, with Chinese. So this is my, this, this moment, how to say, my, how to say, the appeal. appeal. 
Uh, and then, mm, uh, uh, lastly, once more, I would like to express my deep appreciation uh, to those who say uh, uh, people say, in the public level as well as in the, as the uh, officials or the, uh, or the uh, parliament to houses. You see, those really, you see, helping towards just cause, I very much appreciate. Uh, and I, I, I think, you see, I can express on behalf of six million Tibetan people uh, to thank, to appreciate. And uh, I hope, you see, your support will continue, as you promised. And, and also, you see, the American, you see, public, I know, you see, the American public, you see, once, you see, they get the awareness, once you have the awareness, then you are sort of, I think, the, uh, the tendency, some kind of genuine uh, concern about the freedom movement, about the liberty, about the democracy, you have some kind of natural response. This is there. That I really see, appreciate. So, you see, please continue, help us. Thank you very much. On behalf of a grateful university family, it's my great honor, sir, to present you with a small but lasting token of our appreciation for you including Wingate in your tour of America's great cities. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes this morning's lecture program. We thank you for your attendance here and we wish you a very good day.